Congratulations, you're now the proud owner of a Windows handheld, or you want to be, or you're about to be. This thing is so loud. See the fan blowing my hair? <laughs> it's kind of a big expense, and it's kind of a lot of work at first. It's not exactly plug and play. There's kind of a lot of things you have to do on here before you can get yourself going. I'm gonna assume you're either interested in the Asus Ally or the Lenovo Legion Go. Those are the two most popular PC handhelds of this year. I also have a video that I released last year on what to do with your brand new Steam Deck. That's gonna be a little bit different, but you can just go watch that video. I swear to God, I put you on quiet mode. Why are you so loud? These tips will also apply to basically every other Windows handheld that's out there right now. These tips will help you get started and help streamline your experience. Set up your Windows handheld to be the best that it can be. I'll start off with a lot of basic stuff. Some of you more experienced handheld enthusiasts will already know about them, but I'm sure towards the end, we'll have at least one tip that might change the way you use your device. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is turn this thing on and set up Windows. And setting up Windows on a handheld can be a massive pain in the ass. We're gonna hopefully make it a little bit less of a pain in the ass. They're gonna tell you that you should charge your device before turning it on. Now, I usually don't charge devices when I first wanna try them out. I just wanna take them right out of the box and start playing with them. I have to turn this thing off, it's so loud. You should plug in your new Windows handheld before you start using it. Uh, some of these handhelds require a little bit of juice to help kickstart it on its first boot. So maybe plug it in when you first turn it on. Of course, use whatever charger that it came with. Next, for the love of God, plug in a keyboard and mouse physically. My understanding is that you can't use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse on the initial Windows setup. You have to actually get into Windows in order to enable the Bluetooth. So it's just a lot easier to plug one in, which can be difficult if you already have the power cable plugged in. Luckily, the Lenovo Legion Go has two USB-C ports. In the past, I've used USB-C to USB-A dongles to plug in my input peripherals, but I also have one of these Thunderbolt docks. I use these very frequently to dock my Windows handhelds. Whenever I need to download a launcher or really anything in the Windows desktop, I usually just dock it here and use it as if I'm using a desktop computer. I understand most people don't have a setup like this. For $20, you can get one of these mouse and keyboard pads that are pretty useful for setups like this. You're also probably gonna want a USB-C to USB-A dongle of some sort. I shouldn't have to say this, but you should pay really close attention to that Windows setup because if you just click the big blue button without reading anything, you're gonna end up with a subscription to Microsoft Office and OneDrive and all that stuff. There's a little not at this time button in the corner for all of these unwanted apps. Make sure you're not just blindly hitting the big blue button on every screen unless you want Microsoft Office on your Windows handheld. Next, you're gonna have to update the device, which is usually as simple as going to the start menu and just restarting the device. But you're also gonna wanna update the firmware and that's gonna be different on every different device. Aya Neo will update your stuff through their Aya space. The Asus Ally has their armory crate, but I still found myself updating drivers from their website, which is probably the safest bet. The graphics drivers are the most important ones. The worst update process of all goes to the Lenovo Legion Go, which requires you to go to their website, but the files themselves are a bit buried there. So I'll leave a link below with the proper support pages. Next, make sure you turn off auto rotate. Why is that on? Why does that default to on? That's so dumb. Sometimes it's as easy as pressing the little icons on the bottom right of the screen and just clicking rotation lock. But sometimes that option isn't there. If it's not, just click the pencil icon in the corner and add it. Handhelds should only really be held one way. So there's no reason for this rotation lock to be on at all, other than just to annoy us. If you wanna use your Lenovo Legion Go as a tablet, maybe you'd wanna quickly turn this back on. And now it's a new quick menu, so that's easy. Next, you should probably get yourself a VPN. That's right, baby, this video is sponsored by Surfshark. What are you gonna be downloading on here, huh? You probably don't want people knowing what you're downloading on here. Hey, who put that on here? Who put, who put that? Don't show that. Surfshark encrypts your data so that not even your ISP can see what you're doing. This is a true story. One time my parents got a letter in the mail from our ISP because they saw that my brother was downloading the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles movie. This is a completely unrelated story that has nothing to do with the ad that I'm doing right now. 
Surfshark One gets you their VPN, private web search, data leak alerts, and their antivirus. All of that stuff, all wrapped into one. There's no risk in trying Surfshark. They offer a free 30-day money-back guarantee. So this time, get an exclusive Surfshark VPN holiday season deal. Enter promo code DEN to get up to six additional months for free at surfshark.deals slash DEN. Or the link in the description below. Why are you so loud? I turned you off. All right, so sometimes PCs take a while to turn on and like settle. So sometimes I like to just hit the power button and then walk away for a little bit. But then you're stopped by the Windows login. I don't know about you, but I'm the only one who's ever gonna use one of these handhelds. So I like to turn that off. To do this, first go to settings, accounts, sign in options. Then make sure for improved security only allow Windows Hello sign in for Microsoft accounts on this device. Turn that off. Next, go to the start menu, type run, click here and type this, whatever this is, and hit go. Under user accounts, uncheck users must enter a username and password to use this computer. It's buried in there, but that's what you gotta do. You should be done now. Now your handheld will boot straight into their launchers without getting stuck at the password screen. Notice I said launchers. Pretty much every single one of these devices is gonna have their own launcher. I think something like Armory Crate on the Asus Ally is pretty essential because Windows itself is just a bad UI for a handheld. However, I really don't like the Aya space that comes with the Aya Neo and the Lenovo Legion Go's launcher, whatever that's called. Those aren't that great. I don't like those too much. So on my Lenovo Legion Go, I changed that. Microsoft has updated the Xbox app for handhelds, so now the sidebar collapses and gives the tiles more room, but this isn't enough. I actually really, really like Steam Big Picture Mode. If you set Steam to just open in Big Picture Mode by default, you essentially just have a Steam Deck-like experience, which is a near-perfect handheld UI. And it's extremely easy to set up. Steam is usually set to open when your computer turns on by default, so you're already halfway there. Click on Steam, go to Settings, Interface, and check Start Steam in Big Picture Mode. Now you essentially have a Steam Deck that could play Windows games. If a game isn't on Steam, like say Valorant, you can add it as a non-Steam game, making Steam essentially the perfect handheld PC launcher. Next is to get yourself some emulators. Everybody should be playing emulators, they're great. Of course, you can just download each individual emulator because this is a PC after all, but the easiest way to get all of it at once is still EmuDeck. It just instantly downloads all the emulators you need for every system and sets them up pretty much perfectly for your Windows handheld. It worked awesome for the Steam Deck when that first came out, and now it's finally available for Windows, but only in beta. Actually, it looks like it's now just available. You can just download it. It's in beta, but at least you don't have to pay for their Patreon. You, sh you should anyway though, support the developers. Setting this up is extremely easy. There's of course a retro game core video on it. In fact, there's two. One is even linked on the MU Deck website, but the setup is extremely easy. They walk you through everything. And in the end you have your emulation station launcher, which I think is one of the best ones if you're looking for something clean and simple. Opening that up will give you all of your ROMs separated into systems making your retro game library super easy to navigate. And you can add Emulation Station to Steam as a non-Steam game and boom, your entire retro library is available in your launcher now. There's even a way to add each individual ROM that you have into Steam as their own Steam game. I have way too many ROMs, so I don't like doing this. I'd rather just click Emulation Station and then have all of my retro library there. So when you're setting up Emulation Station, that's a step that you can skip if you don't want that if you just want Emulation Station to be in your Steam and not all of the ROMs that you have. To hold all of your games, you might want to upgrade the storage on your handheld. The easiest way to do this is with a micro SD card. Just make sure it's a good one. My favorites are SanDisk and like PNY and Kingston and Samsung. Those are like my go-tos. 
but the Asus Ally has had some issues with its micro SD card slot, and those don't seem to be getting fixed anytime soon. And I suspect that the Lenovo Legion Go might end up with those issues too. It's a heating issue, and this area in the Lenovo Legion also gets extremely hot. So don't put too much faith in your micro SD card on one of these things. Don't be running like new AAA games off of your micro SD card slot. That's probably gonna be too much for it. Put like your ROM library on the micro SD card or something, as long as you have a backup of that micro SD card somewhere else. But it is surprisingly easy to upgrade the internal storage on these things. I haven't done it on the Lenovo Legion Go yet because this came with one terabyte of internal storage and that's way more than enough for me. But I've done it on the Asus Ally and on the Steam Deck and both were remarkably easy to upgrade. I used a video tutorial by Joey's Retro Handhelds, but it was as easy as placing the new SSD into an enclosure, which I guess I'll link below, using Macrium to back up the internal SSD to the external SSD, unscrewing the back, swapping the SSD, and that's it. You're ready to go. And also, all of your stuff is still there. I heard the Lenovo Legion Go is similarly easy to upgrade. Whichever device that you end up with, before you start playing graphically intensive games, you should bump up the power. On the Ally, you can press the triangle button on the left and tap the operating mode option to give you the most watts of power. You can leave the power consumption low if you're just playing ROMs, but if you're playing something a lot more power hungry, you can slap this bitch into turbo mode. On the Lenovo Legion Go, the highest power consumption is actually achieved through its custom mode their performance mode doesn't get you to the full 30 watt TDP. This high of a wattage will rip right through your battery, but it will give you the best frame rate on the games you're playing. This is also a good way to mitigate your battery life if you're away from an outlet. I'm usually always playing this thing plugged in because battery life on these PC handhelds is, is, is very bad. Are you old enough to remember when cell phones used to last you two weeks of battery life? I was in middle school, I think. This brings me to my last tip, which I will credit to the OKest Gamer, who also has a video on tips for your Windows handheld that you can watch after this if you want even more tips for your brand new device. His very first tip is to install something called Battery Bar, which I've never heard of before. This is a fantastic idea because these Windows handhelds do a piss poor job of warning you that the battery is about to die while you're playing a game. Actually just pressing the little overlay button on the Asus and also the Lenovo now give you a little battery icon. It's not the best though, it could be a little better. Also, sometimes pressing the overlay button takes a while. So it might be worth it to set up your own battery overlay using Battery Bar. You can just go to batterybarpro.com, get the free version, don't put in your credit card or anything, and install the floating toolbar and that's it. Now you have a battery percentage that can stay on top of your games while you're playing, which is important when you're running on battery because these Windows handhelds do not give you a very long play session. And there's nothing worse than watching it all of a sudden die in front of you before you've had a chance to save or anything. That died a lot quicker than I... I thought it was going to. And that's all the tips that I have for setting up your brand new PC handheld. Congratulations. If there's anything that you can think of that I left out, you can leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, and any and all this other social media garbage. And then other people who are looking for tips can find them there. And hey, if you made it this far in the video and you don't have your own PC handheld, that's some serious FOMO you've got there. But don't worry, because I'll be giving one of these Lenovo Legion Goes away because they sent me one for a sponsorship, but I had already bought one because they sent, it, they, they sent it too late. It took them too long. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel and go to the link in the description below that will take you to a Twitter account that will give you a link to Gleam where the contest is because I don't like putting Gleam links in the description of a YouTube video because YouTube doesn't like those links for some reason. And please only enter if you do not have one. We don't need more handheld hoarders in this world and good luck. Thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out too. I also stream on twitch.tv slash wolfden where we often talk about future videos and people in the chat help me make stuff like this. They give me ideas and stuff. And of course, the most important thing you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here and share this video with a friend, a friend who is finally getting their hands on one of these. Thank you very much. Have yourself a very good week. Happy holidays. Good to see you. Have a happy and a healthy, you know?